Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 and we are here on a rainy day in Anchorage to take a look at the FlyJ Sim 727. I've had my eye on this particular payware airliner for a long time because I like airliners with three engines in the back frankly and uh, this one uh, promises to be highly detailed. I've flown it once during a live stream uh, learning how to start up and we'll do a fly from Anchorage to Juneau is the plan and I'll show you how it looks and how it does. So here we have the model, obviously, but it's off. We'll start it up and go through the procedure. Uh, taking a look at the gizmos it has, it's got a takeoff and landing sheet. Those are handy. And um, it also has a weight and balance thing. And so I'm just curious, let's take a look at those V1, VR, and V2 numbers. If I load up the passengers, ah, look, they did uh, all change for me. And uh, if we go empty, they change as well, or random. All right, so that all works out. We could put it full up with cargo and passengers and fuel, and it goes overweight. And you can see the takeoff speeds there, but um, uh, empty of fuel is not going to be very useful. Uh, let's have a random amount of fuel. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you can see the center of gravity. Let's have a random amount of passengers and empty of cargo. Okay, so that is okay, I suppose. Uh, I wonder if we can, ah, yeah, we can, well, we can uh, click on this to change how many passengers as well. So like that. Want to change the center of gravity or anything. Okay, so that's that gizmo. And, uh, oh, it's got a red... Oh, but I mean, I guess we could take off from it, uh, take off anyway. Despite that, obviously. But hey, we don't need that much fuel, we're going to Juno only. So when we go below, it no longer has that in red, and that icon's no longer in red. Okay, so we have the options, field of view, exterior sound, interior sound, whether we have the FMS system or not, that can be there or go away. Um, I'm probably not going to program the FMS, but I don't like a blank spot there. Um, yoke visible. I mean, we could... I'll keep it there. Okay, so then we have the maintenance system. So we do, we can have persistent wear and tear on this plane, at least on these systems. So for now, I'm going to keep that off. And finally, the startup checklist. So uh, it does have a very nice... Flight engineer panel, like the Concorde, not quite as uh, yeah, complicated as the Concorde, but it's good enough. So we've got the battery on, uh, APU or ground power on. I'll just go straight to the APU right now. So click the APU, step, start, hold for three seconds, two, three. I'll hold until I can hear it. Okay, I can hear it. Okay, and then uh, once we get a uh, good exhaust temp, I'll close the generator circuit. Okay, it drops back down. And now, ah, good. And we'll close this field circuit as well. Okay, so we're ready to go. Stall warning check. Yes, we can hear it and uh, emergency exit lights is up here and so I'm gonna click armed so that's fine we'll close that and passenger lights as required no smoking and fasten seat belts window heat is all the way in the back there those and then the radio radar transponder I'm not going to bother with, and uh, parking brake is set. We've already done the APU. So basically, the stuff on the flight engineer panel, a lot of it has gone up to the upper panel in more modern Boeing jets. Somewhat simplified, but not a whole lot, actually. Okay, so beacon, well, beacon's up front. We'll have that on. 
Galley power should be off. Galley power is off. Packs should be off. The left AC pack is off and the right AC pack is off. As you can see there, bleed pressure, the PSI in the center here is above 30. And the engine bleed valves are all open. So engine one, bleed air, and two and three. Okay, so now we can start the engines already which is simpler than uh, like a 757 or something. Uh, so... Oh, so normally you'd push back first and do it, but uh, at this location... If it raining and all... No, I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, we're not really at a proper gate. I think we can just go ahead. That's my excuse anyway. So, the engine start switches. Well, let me shift over to the right a bit. And actually, if we could shift a little bit this away. All right, so the engine start switches are up here. And we'll start engine three first, then one, then two. Uh, it might be three, two, one, but I'm pretty sure three is the first one. Okay, so we set it to ground. And then we wait until N2 down here is at 20%. And then we flip the cutoff to idle. So you can see it on idle there. And then once the oil pressure light is off, we can start the next one. Okay. So we'll go for engine number one, ground, and then to idle. And finally, engine two, ground. Now, this isn't meant to be a tutorial for how to start it. Actually, uh, Q8 Pilot has a good tutorial that goes through the FMC as well. FMS, FMC. So, yeah. I would recommend that one. I'm just doing it for fun. We're gonna fly. And I'm just showing the general features of the plane. It's more of a, a tour, if you will. Okay, next. Anti-ice as required. Well, this is Anchorage. <laughs> so, I think it's required. Let me uh, turn those on the fuel heat on. Vent any icing. Um, you know what? Uh, let me get the generators closed now. So we get some from the engines. And I'm going to switch power. This probably appears later on, but... Uh, Got to switch it to generator 3, which is the third engine. Okay, uh, well, elevator system, the system B for the hydraulics needs to be, so we got system A there, and then we've got system B, so I'm going to set this on as well. Going back to the checklist, we will have galley power on. Uh, flight controls will check outside. Now that we've got both hydraulic systems on, we see... Incidentally, I think if you have only one hydraulic system on, only the bottom portion of the rudder turns. Interestingly enough. I've done that before. Okay, all the controls seem fine, and I'll start extending the flaps. Let me verify that the flaps are going down. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, galley power's on, electrical, no lights. Well, we definitely have lights here, and those are for the boost pumps. So let's get the boost pumps on. I mean, technically, that's not the electrical section. This is the fuel section. And the electrical section, we don't have any lights as expected. But I want, uh, I'm surprised they didn't ask me to put the boost pumps on earlier. But uh, during takeoff, I think it's normal to have them on. So hydraulics, we already turned on. And the pressure is nominal. And the quantities are good. We can shut off the APU now, in theory. Let's make sure. Let's see if uh, I have done anything wrong here. So APU is off. We should hear it go off. 
we do. And nothing should uh, pop up in terms of warnings. Um, it didn't tell me, oh, it did tell me to do pitot heat. So let's turn on the pitot heat. And press set for cruise altitude. I don't think it means the this cruise altitude. I think it means the pressure set for cruise altitude. So let's go back to the engineer panel. And the pressure stuff is over here. I had problems with it before because I had forgotten to turn on the AC packs. So let's turn on the AC packs here. It asks us to close number two bleed air. So, oh, duct overheat. Um, why is duct overheat? Set those to auto. Let me set this to flight. I don't know why that would have duct overheat. Maybe, let's see, I turn it off. Maybe I'll turn those on in flight. This climb rate thing is funny. Anyway, uh, speed bugs are probably all right already. Start switch is guarded. Transponder I'll skip. Landing lights I'll skip because the tow truck is going to ask me to turn them off anyway. Auto pack trip switch. Um, normal or cutout. Well, it says normal or cutout. Those are my only two choices. Let me just go normal. That sounds good. Seatbelts on. Um, anti ice. We've got the fuel heat at least. And that's at all after takeoff. Okay. We'll keep in mind the pressurization situation. But uh, for now, I think we are go to... No, oh, let me just reset my camera. Go to get a tug. So, I've got better pushback. That is my plan, yes. Okay, we are getting our pushback. Alright, looking good. Um, can, I, can, I, can I get that sound off, please? Where's my master warning anyway? Okay, you're seeing a taxi. Yeah, that effect on that runway is just weird. You no, know, it says runway 25, but our real heading seems to be 270 based on the map. I'm not sure. Probably should go with... Oh, yeah, this is... I don't need this effect on this runway right now. I don't know what causes this, but... It's breaking the mood, darn it. I think maybe that sound has to do with... I mean, last time... It was because of this system. I'm gonna turn these on now. I mean, it didn't, uh, turning them off sure didn't help the overheat thing, but that temperature of more than 60 degrees Celsius does make not make me feel happy. Let me push reset on that. Oh, well, that's really high, and then... Well, it turned off the light. <laughs> I guess that's good enough. We're on flight there. Let's hope everything turns out all right. All right, we'll take it. Okay, I think it'll look better inside the cockpit, to be honest. Once we leave the run, well, no, actually it doesn't. All right. Here we go. Doesn't look good at all. 
This doesn't happen at any other locations. It just seems to be Anchorage. I think the way the airport is configured, I don't know, maybe I have it as an add-on, like one of those freeware add-on things. Okay, gear up. Flaps up. Yeah, everything's got that problem. That aside though, it's looking good. Now, the plane's wing isn't as efficient, I guess, as uh, more modern airliners. So it can't really climb that quickly and still maintain speed. It's faster on average than modern airliners because they're just set to a slower speed. But as far as getting there, it takes some time. You know what? I feel bad about not featuring the nice Alaskan landscape. So I'm gonna, instead of go with the real world weather, I'll just uh, manually configure the weather so that we can see stuff. We see the airport. We can see the airport. There we go. Definitely not a sustainable climb angle. There. Let's see, what's the most photogenic view? I think with the Alaskan sunlight on the body of the plane, this is pretty good. Alright, as we get to higher levels, let's double check on that. Um, I still have that warning sound, I swear. Uh, cabin altitude is going up. And the pressure differential is going up as expected. Tail skid. Um, is the tail skid out? The tail skid is out. Um, how do I retract the tail skid? Uh... I can't figure out how to lift a tail skid. I think... Okay, well, before I do the tail skid, let me try and get this pointed in the right direction and have the autopilot at least hold the heading. So, let's have the heading bug set. Okay, mode selector heading, oh no, heading please. We don't need altitude, hold on, and then it's like half of the autopilot settings are up there and half down here and later uh, airliners still move them all up there. So autopilot engage and uh, we'll just set the, uh, the vertical speed should continue climbing, yeah, as it is right now. Okay. Heading, select, engage. So now I'll acquire the heading. And we'll check that that happens as planned. Yeah, it's leveling out at uh, 120. And actually, I want uh, maybe 110. And I'll turn to 110. And this is the view from outside. We seem to have too much of a climb rate. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, is it? Uh, well, we've got a bit of a problem. Bank angle. Bank angle. Okay, okay. Bank I think it over trimmed. Bank angle. Bank angle. Bank angle. I think it over trimmed up. Bank angle. Sorry, pilot. Uh, passengers, pilots. Pilots don't care. Matter. All right. Yeah, I think uh, it was uh, trying to p uh, trim up too much on the vertical speed setting. Okay. Yeah, this vertical speed setting is a little bit weird since it's not a number. Um, 
Can we just have a... It doesn't even want me to go to pitch hold. What well, if I go turn that on first? Pitch hold, please. Okay. Okay, well, we don't really want to pitch this much. It's just warning me. I'm using the... Elevator trim now. Okay. Okay, and heading activate. Alright. Let me just keep an eye on what it's doing now. That should be a sustainable vertical speed right there. Might want a little bit more, but after what just happened, I'm not going to push it. It's holding the heading fine. Alright, so yeah. At question is this vertical speed guy. Which, um... I don't even know how... Uh, yeah, you click like this. That should be zero. Let's see. Okay, yeah. And then if I... want to climb a bit. Just a little bit, and it'll be like that. Okay, it looks like uh, like each notch is like a thousand feet per minute. Which really means that there are way too many notches on this vertical speed thing. I'd rather have it a little bit more finely tuned, but okay. I'm happy to report that the temperature here is now right below 20 degrees Celsius, so that's nominal and uh, Cabin pressure differentials at 8, which is nominal. Okay, we're approaching the target altitude based on that selector there. That's what it's warning me about. So we will soon go from uh, vertical speed hold to altitude hold. Which is this flick switch up here. Oh, maybe it's just altitude select. Uh, we had to arm that. So we had to arm that <laughs> first. Okay. Okay, the altitude select light goes green, and now I think I can click altitude hold. Is that right? Yep. Now we're on altitude hold. All right. Good times. The autopilot is working properly. Now, the continuous hunt for the tail skid control. I mean, probably it's broken by now. But it didn't actually tell me it was broken. Oh, we do have this little iPad thing. Um, roots. Uh, well, KPNC, wasn't it? No, oh, it's not KPNC, sorry. Oops. Cancel that. Roots. It's P-A-N-C. Right. And then this uh, destination is P-A-J-N. Alright, so it tells us here that we've got some airways. It's going to be about 500 nautical miles. So we've got that sort of information available to us. Let's go home. This airport lookup, so P A J N. Oh, it's got the runway. It doesn't have the map of it, but it's got the the length of the runway and the orientation of the runway and the weather report. Charts, though, we would have to load in charts for that. It can. Oh, it does have a map thing. Um, doesn't show a whole lot right now. Minus, 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 minus. Oh, okay. Now it's loaded some stuff in. May just take some time to load. Okay, there we go. That's that's a nicer map than the stock map. I mean, this one only zooms out so much. It still shows us uh, by the coast there, but. The arbitrary zoom of this is much better. I can't really zoom... Oh, no, there we go. Okay, 
So this is a pretty useful pad over here. You can make notes and Navigraph. I don't have nav. I don't think I have anything with Navigraph or anything. So all right. Still only going uh, Mach point eight. We can pour on some speed here. Oh, our uh, uh, altimeter is mistuned. Sorry. And yeah, actually, uh, this is the instrument comparator. So we adjusted this altimeter, but we didn't adjust this altimeter. So we should do this one now. And also on the co-pilot side, we need them all matching. Taking a look around, we didn't get a chance to admire its belly. Its shiny, shiny belly. All right, we are two thirds of the way through the flight and the view is pretty good. The scenery is very nice, very Alaska. This is Tongas National Forest. Fuel wise, we're fine. We can see the fuel quantities on the engineer panel, plenty of fuel still. And of course we took off with it under the maximum landing weight, so no problems there. Though if you look really close at the landscape, it's rendering quite a lot of trees too. You can see the little specks on the, on the glaciers there and snow. Unfortunately we've got a slice of bad photo scenery there, but otherwise on this side it's looking pretty good. Seems like this is part of the Lamplu Glacier. Anyway, we're approaching Glacier Bay National Park. If that helps orienting you. We should be able to see Juno to our left, but I started descending a little bit late, so there are clouds. Uh, Oh, there's a clearing there. Well, I see the airport. <laughs> That's obvious enough. A rather prominent airport. Look at that. All that snow. Oh, turns out we've got rain here too. I had turned that off. Okay, at this point I will take it off of autopilot. Oop. Let's engage. Yes, much warning. And we can turn off that light. And we turn. Okay, let's see what it looks like from outside. That's how we're configured right now. Tail skid is nominal, I guess. At least that nothing else seems broken. We're a little bit low. There's a hill right in the way. Great. Oh, this is not the runway, is it? Gosh darn it, I aimed at the wrong thing. I think. Which one's the runway? <laughs> well... Uh, this is the taxiway. Okay, that's all messed up. I don't know what I'm looking at even. Let's abort, abort, abort that. Oh, it's because the runway is all got this streaky stuff on it. Gosh darn, I need to turn that off somehow. It looked more like a taxiway than a runway because of all the streaky stuff. This is nonsense. Okay, let's do it properly this time. Well, sort of properly. Contact. Uh. 
Okay, reversers are operating, it says. Okay, let's see the status of the cockpit. Yes, the reversers are off. And here we are. We have made it to Juno. And everything's looking good with the plane. I think at that ticking sound in the back, I still haven't uh, figured out. And nor do I know about the tail skid. But all in all, pretty good flight. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.